this is a battle in the Use It and Lose It tournament, round 2. So I have been uploading all of the battles that people have sent to me, but some battles in round 2 have been played after and sent after some of the some of the battles in round 3 and some of the battles I haven't gotten. So uh, you can't make players players are essentially sending me st me these battles out of their own free will. It's not like they have to do it. So I'm very, very thankful for the people who take the time to send me the replays so I can upload them, so people can watch them. There have been some great games, but not all players want to do that, and that's fine. But it also means that, that the casting of these games is going to be a bit messy. There are going to be some round two games after I've started round three and so on. But hopefully that's no issue for you. Hopefully you're mainly concerned with what I'm concerned with, which is watching great games. So now we have uh, Macedon versus Athens. Macedon, mercenary Thracians on the flanks. Thorax swords, backed up by Thessalians. Some more Thessalians here. We have um, Tarentine hiding in the forest. And um, companion cav general. Slingers, dirt cheap slingers. Um, nothing fancy. And then in the center we have three Hoplites. For Athens, we have a pike center, backed up by some slingers, and, uh, yep, slingers, Hippias lancers, mercenary Thracians, Thorax Hoplites, Citizen Cav, more Tarentines, uh, we have some Thorax Hoplites on the flanks, and Citizen Cavalry. So, in this, in, in the particular matchup of Athens versus uh, Macedon, Macedon has the main advantage for Macedon, is the, in my opinion, the Thessalians. The very cheap, very good Thessalians. They have a better charge bonus than the Hippeus. And they are cheaper. Now the Hippeus have more armor. But give me a Thessalian any day. They are just a great unit. Perfect in terms of price, cost effectiveness. Punishing if you don't use them correctly. Very rewarding if they are used correctly. The Tarentines are rushing up here to scout out a bit, see what they can see. The Tarentines is one of those units that I don't use too much because being medium missile cavalry, it means that quite a few units can catch them. And it also means that they are susceptible to missile fire, even though they have 60 armor. If Tarentines had spears, things would be a lot different. That would make them um, potentially a much, much better unit. Now their melee attack is atrocious, but having a spear would help a bit at least. So Athens pushing up here. We can see more of the Athenian army. We have mercenary Thracian warriors, uh, Thoreos. But Macedon's cavalry is inferior. Citizen cavalry is inferior. Uh, the main advantage that Mac that uh, Athens has over Macedon, I'd say, is the Thorax Hoplites. Uh, Thorax Hoplites are a very good unit. They defeat Thorax Swords, they defeat standard Hoplites. Uh, just uh, the, the most, probably the most cost-effective Hoplite unit in the game. Perfect in terms of price, they can't go head-to-head -head with Barbarian Swords. But against the Greek faction, this is actually one of the best units that you can bring. The mercenary veteran hoplites are also very good against Greek factions. Since there are no really, really good melee units on the field. Slingers moving up a bit here. Looks like we have some skirmishing going on. No kills yet for either side. Athens posting in the back of Macedon. Now here we have uh, spaghetti th the Tarentines against... Uh, Standard formation Tarentines. But neither side wants to commit to the engagement. And um, makes sense. There is Thorax Sword support here, and the Thorax Swords getting off a precursor volley on Tarentines is going to kill a lot of Tarentines. Macedon going very wide here. Just pulling back from the pike center of Athens. Because Athens center is strong. It can't be assaulted directly. You have pikes together with uh, Thracian support. But Macedon's flanks are fairly weak. 
I mean, Athens' flanks are fairly weak, so Macedon has the stronger flanks, Athens has the stronger center, and if the Athenian center crumbles, then the center is going to be completely helpless. Here we have some mercenary Rhodians firing on these Tarentines, but they are a bit exposed, getting some support now though. So they're getting nice shots off on the Tarentines. And this is uh, becoming a problem for Athens, because Macedon is so strong on the flanks here. And here we have Thessalians going in towards Thorax Hoplites. Uh, Thorax Hoplites are not braced. So, that was a good charge from the Thessalians. The Thorax go into Phalanx, and there is no reason to go into Phalanx after the charge has happened, really. But they lost a few men there, and now the Thorax Swords come into support. The Thorax Hoplites could just charge here, uh, but they took some prior damage. So taking prior damage could mean that the Thorax Swords actually are able to defeat the Thorax Hoplites. Thoreos moving up here to throw some javelins. So many Macedonian units on the flanks. Uh, if Athens has moved up heavily on the flanks here. Trying to shift its center, skirmishing in the center with slingers. Getting some kills, getting good kills on the slingers here. Now the Tarentines are being very ballsy, moving up close, throwing their javelins on the thorax. Ideally, they would be firing at the firing at the, at the Thessalians, but they can't really get to the Thessalians at the moment. It's too bad thorax swords are so shit because they look pretty cool. Uh, the Hoplites rushing in here, there's nothing that really wants to take the engagement against the Hoplites, aside from this pike unit. The pikes given an attack order, very nicely done. So the pikes get the charge, and now the pikes should drop. The pikes drop, but yeah, the pikes are going to start doing super weird shit. Just point the pikes in every which direction. The pike YOLO can work, uh, but it needs to be like perfectly straight. So over here we have pikes fighting up against Hoplites and Thorax Hoplites. The um, Hoplites should die very quickly here. Although they are inside of the pike formation, again pikes doing the weirdest of stuff. And the Hoplites are just pushing back the uh, skirmishers of Athens. Athens not really getting their money's worth out of their skirmish units at this point in the battle. Thorax Hoplites fighting Thorax Swords. Thorax Hoplites taking quite a few casualties here. And when the Tarentines come into support, the Thess Thessalians come into support, it's going to be problematic. The companion cavalry chasing the... Chasing the... Um, Citizen cavalry here, but doing so could bring them into the pikes. Nice charge here by the Hippeus out of the forest. The Tarentines come in to stop the Hippeus. Very messy engagement here. Uh, the companion cavalry is losing decisively, and I think that was from running into the pikes here and getting charged by the Hippeus. But now comes a very important supporting unit the mercenary Thracian warriors. They're going to kill enemy cavalry so quickly with their Amphias. Yeah, they are chopping down these horses. And over here the Thorax Swords are losing. The Thessalians get hit by, Hip by Hippeus and they're not going to like that one bit. Citizen Cavalry dying without doing much, that's what Citizen Cav does. The skirmishers of uh, Macedon are being nicely protected by this Thessalian in the center. They are firing on the mercenary Thracians, doing a bit of damage. Macedon is losing a Hoplite in the forest, but look at the kills on the mercenary Thracians. Destroying the Hippeus. The Hippeus can't pull out of this without taking massive casualties, so the Hippeus weren't really effective because of the Thracian warrior support. 
nice charge from the Thessalians. Great follow up by Hoplites into the mercenary Thracian warriors. Mercenary Thracian warriors so dangerous on the charge, but so fragile to getting charged. So the Hoplites are causing some damage to the Thracians. And over here, the Thessalian cavalry chasing away the Hippeus lancers of Athens. And. Victory for Macedon. So it seems that uh, Johannes left the battle. Uh, the the uh, fairly equal in terms of kills, but Athens was about to lose the uh, lose the general, and um, of course the pikes don't do too much other than bugging out. Uh, for Macedon, the Thracian warriors were able to support really well without really losing much themselves. And dealing with all of these Thessalians together with some infantry support can be very hard for Athens. Especially when Athens has... I mean, Athens pays a lot for these Epeus. And the citizen cavalry just... In the ideal scenario, uh, the citizen cavalry will be come in behind a unit of Thessalians and stop them from retreating after they have charged an infantry unit. But uh, for Athens, in this particular case, I, d I think... The army was a bit problematic. I think Athens can be a lot stronger by just dropping the pikes, dropping the thoreos, and bringing more thorax hoplites, veteran hoplites, and yes, even thorax swords for the precursors against Macedon and for tying down, for tying down, um, for tying down hoplites and tying down thorax swords, so that the superior thorax hoplites can can uh, rise to the task of killing the enemy infantry, which they do, they, they really excel at against uh, Greek faction. They're really good at that. And bringing the mercenary Thracians, a great choice. Very good at supporting cab fights, so maybe citizen plus mercenary Thracian could be nice, but the thing with mercenary Thracians is that they, even these slingers, would murder the Thracian warriors quickly. So it's difficult to use them. You kind of have to ensure the cav superiority. You have to ensure the skirmish superiority before you can use mercenary Thracian warrior, warriors to their full effect. But I think the Macedonian army was a very good one. Macedon doesn't have access to the thorax hoplites, so bringing hoplites in that case makes sense. Bringing thorax swords makes sense. So good job and congratulations for um, for winning this. It was a good game. Too bad Johannes dropped. It would have been interesting to see how the battle would have progressed, but I don't see... I mean basically lost all of the cavalry, lost the general. Um, I don't see this ending well for, for uh, Athens at all. Strength and honor.